gadgets. We all love them, but oh, how to keep them organized. Today on Nancy Zeman TV, I'd like to show you how to create a gadget bag plus add personalization. This quilted, embroidered, and monogrammed bag is ideal to store your camera. It's made all on the hoop with your embroidery machine. I'd like to show you how. It's amazing what an embroidery machine can do from creating the beautiful embroideries, but also doing some of the assemblies and the important details of our gadget bag. This gadget bag has six embroideries, the flap exterior, the flap interior, including placement for the snap, the bag exterior, nicely quilted, stitched by the embroidery machine, and then, move my camera, the interior for the bag. But I said there were six, and I've only told you about four. Well, the remaining two are very functional embroideries. They're the outline stitches for the support for the bag and for the flap. Two different shapes, one flap and two bag pieces are needed. Since this is an embroidery, we're going to stitch the shape of the Peltex, this crisp, stiff interfacing, directly onto the fabric. Rather than hooping in the traditional manner, I've used a snap hoop, a five by seven snap hoop. I've already stitched the outline of the two bag pieces. One is in my hoop and one has already been stitched. And the reason I'm using this hoop is that I'm able to advance the fabric through the hoop so that just the very final edge of the last embroidered area is in the hoop, so I'm not going to have any waste. Then when I go to my screen, you'll be able to see the embroidery that I have chosen. It's a simple embroidery. It's just the outline shape of the embroidery itself. And what we're going to do is just stitch that, stitch just the outline shape next. And as I close this and lower the presser foot, it's just going to outline the shape of the flap, flap piece, just an outline shape. So it's a pattern shape. While this is stitching, I'll have all three of my pattern shapes. The next step is to take the embroidery out of the, the fabric, out of the hoop, and then just do the trimming to size. So you're going to trim this, and if you'd like to, if you're making multiples, you can make a pattern piece and then cut this for future bags. And now I just slide this out of the machine, and we'd be cutting out following the outline stitches. Now since I've already done this, the next step is to stitch, and I'm going to stitch the interior of the flap, and so I've deleted my outline stitch, and I'll select, as you'll soon see, the flap stitch, and I'll set that. This particular embroidery has three steps. The first step is that it has an outline stitch, and that's exactly what I have stitched, an outline stitch of the placement for the flap. Because we cut the peltex, which I'll reach underneath, and on the underside of the Peltex, I have placed double-sided basting tape. Remove it, and this is going to go on the underside. So I've highlighted my stitches, place it on the underside, and then I will insert the hoop into the machine. Now since I've already stitched this at a prior time, I'm going to advance the thread to the next stitching. So I'll just advance it one because I would have already stitched this. And the next stitch that comes up is a grid stitch. A grid as well as a circle stitch, which you'll soon see. So I'll close this and then I'll just do the stitching. Lower the presser foot and let it stitch. And it's going to do the, the stitching, the cross hatch, and what it will do is to position and hold the Peltex into place. As we look at this sample, you'll see the gridding. And it just quickly does this, programmed in. It's doing more quilting right now than it is embroidery. It's really fascinating. And remember that Peltex is underneath. We've come a long way with embroidery from working with just, first of all, just maybe decorative embroideries on the top of a garment. Now we're doing functional, combining quilting, embroidery, and construction because, after all, the interior piece was a construction piece. The last stitching that is on this screen will be a circle. 
it'll be a circle so we know exactly where to place the snap placement. So that will be what you'll see in just a few minutes and it'll just be very quick and we'll sew along the edge. We'll let this finish at a later date and I'll cut the threads and remove this. And I think you get the idea how, how simple this is. And I'll slip this off because the next embroidery to stitch is the outer flap. Now the outer flap has a monogram which you can place on if you'd like and also has a placement for the rickrack. As I close this and I'm going to select my next pattern it's coming up in short order. It'll be for the flap of the gadget bag. You'll see that this has several stitches and as I stitch it set it, you'll see that the very first setting is a gridded surface. And I have on this particular hoop pre-stitched. I had fleece, polyester fleece, top fabric, and then close quilting. Very close with, we use tonal thread to get this nice gridded surface. We're going to sew the next stitch, which when I draw it up, it doesn't look much like a stitch because it's just a straight stitch. And as we go up to the screen, you'll see it's just a stitch around the flap. Well, when I place this into the machine, you'll see that I'll put the rickrack into place. So with a glue stick, we'll just, in this way, I made this a little colorful so that you can see I'm placing the glue stick around the fabric. And I like to use just paper glue stick. Position the rickrack around the stitching. Position it with your fingers and it will not gum up your machine. I get asked that question all the time. Just position it down, tack it, let it dry just a couple of seconds, and then we'll lower the presser foot and we'll do the stitching. And the machine will stitch the edge of the rickrack down the center of the rickrack into position. Now to do the monogramming, which is next, I'm going to choose to scan the image first because I want to make sure that I include the rickrack positioning and I'm going to scan the image. So on my screen just hit the little camera and it'll take a while but an interesting thing happens. The camera in the machine, not only do we have a camera that's videotaping us, but the camera in the machine is scanning what the fabric is underneath the foot area. And this will help me in getting the position just exactly right. If you, since we have some additional embellishment in here, then I know exactly where it's going to be. And in seconds, you will see the scan of my flap, including the rickrack. So I know exactly where I should place my next monogram, or my only monogram. I'll select a letter positioning, and we're going to select an M right now. Now I can position this this being the monogram. I'm going to move it over a little bit. It needs to be centered and a couple dots and then I'm going to have it come down a little bit so I can just get it in the right spot. There, I think that's great so I'm going to sew in that area. And now I can stitch the monogram. As I mentioned earlier, you could choose a monogram, an embroidery. It's just a great way by using the scanning feature to see exactly where your added embellishment is going to be placed. It's going to take a little bit of time for that to stitch out, just a few minutes for that to stitch out, so I'll show you the next step. One well, of the last stitches on this particular embroidery is a straight stitch, a straight stitch to attach the flap, the back flap to the front. Along the outer outline, you're going to align the stitching line of the flap. And here you can see that I've taped down along the edges the flap to the hoop and then let the machine stitch, stitch that outline. After you have removed the fabric from the hoop, then trim away the seam allowances and then turn the flap right side out. And the flap is complete. Next, it's time to stitch the bag. After completing the flap of your gadget bag, then it's time to create the bag. And there are two specific embroideries. The embroidery that I have on my machine right now is for the outer bag. And you're going to be creating two halves. And it's stitched with 
fleece and the fabric hooped. On one of the pieces, you'll be stitching the hoop or the circle shape for the snap placement. The other lining portion is almost identical to the flap lining, except this doesn't need a snap placement. And of course, the shape is slightly different. You stitch an outline, you'll place the Peltex behind, and then the gridded system. In the instructions, you'll learn how to sew the underseam, the side seams, and create the gusset. But I'll show you that a little bit later. When you're working with embroidery and you're working with continuous designs or multiple designs, you might want to consider, again, the snap hoop because you can cut the fabric long, not just to fit one hooping, but to fit several hoopings. Advance the fabric in the hoop, just so it's just a little bit beyond. So you can see, I can see a little bit of it. Let's do a little more. Get it aligned straight, pull it taut, and then select the design. On my LCD screen, you'll see the gadget bag, the outer shape has an outline stitch and then it has a gridded stitch. And then as I sew this, it's really quite fast. We'll just lower the presser foot and let it stitch. And after you have the stitching complete, I'll have about a fourth of an inch seam allowance allowed between these areas and I can trim out the various shapes and then do the stitching. The stitching and the, the instructions and the designer handbags will show you to stitch the side seam, the lower edge, and then the gusset area. Now when working with the flap itself, you're going to be doing the same stitching and then complete the bag. I'll show you that the flap is attached to the outer bag. And you can see all we have left to do is to tuck the inner bag into the outer bag. And you're going to pin all the outer edges that have been turned under together, pin them together, and do some edge stitching. Just edge stitch all of, around the edge. In designer bags, you'll get handbag ideas to create large bags, small bags, and of course, this gusset bag. And you'll get the instructions. But we realize that with your embroidery machine, it's more than just a decorative stitch. You can certainly do construction, assemble, and what fun to make a simple gadget bag. I hope you enjoyed learning how to stitch a gadget bag in the hoop. To learn more about the featured products with my favorite sewing machines, visit a participating Baby Lock retailer and ask about special offers from this video. Tell them Nancy sent you.